university, so I've been told a lot of our youth is going to be growing up very soon, or maybe in the next couple of weeks, going to go to university, possibly move away from home. So I've been asked to do a talk on my experiences, what I learned, my mistakes, the good, the bad, my challenges, just to help the children prepare, but also the parents who prepare, to kind of prepare your kids on what to expect, what not to expect, how to keep safe. So my talks, will we pass the test? Because everything in life is a test. Whether we go to university, whether we go to work, whether we're just studying at school, whether we're staying at home or not at home. So it's just a little insight. Um, I did make many mistakes at university. I wasn't perfect, but I learned from those mistakes. And at the end of the day, I came home. I was safe um, and managed to get by. I passed my degree. I got my master's in my mathematics. So the first question many people will ask is stay at home or go away from home. Now every household is different. The question you need to ask is can you study at home? Will your parents be like my parents constantly asking you to say, you know, can you just make dinner today or can you go shopping for me or can you go pick you know, your little brother up or little brother up from school? Or can you actually sit at home and say, yeah, I can lock myself in my room, I can study, I can get away from everything and I can really put 100% into my university work or my A-levels or whatever you're studying. The next thing to think about is which university? Now many people will look at the location, they might look at, oh that university's got a really good course, they might look at, oh in that university, I don't know, they have an ice rink or they have a pool or they have a really good gym facility, but you're going to university to study. So we need to think about what university, what's good for your course, what's maybe not so good for your course. So I'll give an example for me. I applied for five universities. Applied for Reading, Queen's Mary in London, Preston, Wolverhampton, and then one in Swansea, which was in Wales. And I got interviews for all five. And then me and my dad, because my dad's my chauffeur at that point, um, took me to all five universities for my interviews, and I got five acceptances. But when I was there, both me and my dad felt that Reading was the best fit. For some reason, it just clicked. Not only were the lecturers really good, they kind of cared about what the students wanted to do. They cared about the course. They were really passionate about maths. Um, compared to other universities as well, maybe not so much um, kind of that language barrier. So when I went to Swansea, there was a language barrier because most people were speaking Welsh. So you want to look at where do you feel at home? Which university has really good teaching levels? Which university has, um, which university is good for you, for your family, for your career? Which university has that extra little bit that says, okay, this is what you're gonna learn in your course, but hang on a minute, I wanna get a job at the end of it. So what's gonna give you that little bit of extra to say, yes, I can apply my skills to that job? And the second thing is, don't look at where your friends are going and don't look at somewhere that's nice. Your friends will come and go, and at university you make new friends, and you actually make some really good friends for life. Not everyone at university is brilliant, as you all know in life, but you make some really good friends at university. But you've got to balance that with distance. So, I went to Reading, which was four hours away on a good day, or some days it actually took me seven, eight hours to come home on the car or in the train. Now, for me, I managed it, and my parents managed it, you know, we met up, quite a lot during the year, but it was very, very far. So if I had any advice is do try stay near home, but look at, balance it with the course, the university as well. If you do say go to Birmingham from here anyway, it's a two hour drive, so you can do that within a day. When I was in Reading, I'd have to literally take a whole day out just to travel home. And I remember ringing my mum and dad on many occasions saying, mom, dad, I just need to come home, just need to come but it wasn't possible because it was just a bit too far away. So that's something to think about, both for the children and for the parents. Okay, so if you do move out, where to live? Halls, flat, find someone that you know in the area. So I went with halls in my first year. Um, two reasons mainly. First of all, it was all bills inclusive, including your internet. You kind of knew you were going to be in a safe place, you had that security. But also, you didn't have that extra pressure of, oh, I have to pay electric bill, or the, the heating's gone off and it's freezing cold, I have to go out at midnight. 
you know, put some more money on your card or anything like that. So that's why I went for halls. But in my second year, in my third year, my fourth year, my masters, I actually stayed in a flat on my own. Now that was very expensive, but I realised, hang on a minute, I'm here to study. I'm here to do my best in my studying, and the best way to do that is to stay on my own. I won't have that distraction of friends. If I want to meet my friends, I can meet them at university, or I can meet them out and about. But I don't have that distraction of hang on it, my friends are outside in the kitchen area, or going out for a drink, or going out playing, or whatever. You know, I won't have that distraction or that little added pressure to say, well, they're socialising, maybe I should too. So when I was in my flat on my own, you kind of got a lot more done in terms of studying. Um, when I was in halls, just to explain, there's various different halls. So most universities will give you the option. You can have a bedroom and then a shared bathroom and a shared kitchen. You can have a bedroom and your own bathroom, but a shared kitchen. Or you, some universities will give you the option of a bedroom, um, your own bathroom and your own kitchen. So my university didn't give me the last option because they just didn't have the facilities. But I went for my own bathroom, own bedroom, and a shared kitchen, which meant I was sharing my kitchen with eight other people. Now, before going to university, I didn't know who those eight people were. But that's another skill you've got to learn, networking and how to organise yourself and schedule yourself so you're not constantly hitting each other at the same time of eating and things like that. Um, but as a recommendation, definitely go for your own bathroom gives you that added privacy, particularly being a girl as well, gives you that added privacy and it also just keeps you is a little bit. You know, going to university is a big thing and when you were, uh, I have heard of, from some of my friends who were in shared bathrooms, people will be running from the bathroom to their bedroom in just a towel and things like that and you don't want that. So going for your own bathroom is a lot better. You know, you can get ready, get changed in the morning, everyone else does the same and then everyone's decent when they go to the kitchen area in the morning. Um, another tip is, particularly because the majority of us are vegetarians, and I was a quite a strict vegetarian, take lots of Dettol so you can clean down your surfaces. You know what it's like at home when you want to cook or your mums and dads want to cook or, you know, clean stuff. You want it clean before you start cooking because everyone else may be not so uh, clean like you are. You know what the body are like. They'll just leave things in the sink, you know, they won't bother washing up. Um, so take Dettol, make sure you clean things before you cook and then leave it as you've got it because that will just give you that little bit of respect from your friends. Um, so I mentioned my second, third and fourth year I was in a flat on my own. Now I had a studio flat which was a really small kitchen but the kitchen was big enough to make dal roti, make homemade pizza because mum and dad brought me a nice bread machine. I brought you know, homemade bread every morning which was really nice, smell in the morning. Um, but also it gave you that little bit of time, so when you did have time, wanted to relax, you can make that extra cake or whatever you wanted to fancy. But it was small, but it lasted for four, three years even, so it wasn't too bad. And then if you look at the flip side, if you are staying at home, what's best? Is it better to stay out 9 till 5 and study? So I know a lot of my friends who did stay at home in Reading. They said, between nine and six every day, I'm going to pretend I've got a full-time job and I'll stay on the university campus. Mm. I'm going to study. I'm going to act as if I've got a job. Between nine and six, I will study. Then when I go home, I can relax. I can help my parents out. I can chill out. I can do that extra work if I need to. But they don't have that pressure of, hang on a minute, I've got a deadline for the next day and I haven't got time to do it when I go home. So that's something to think about. Um, another thing to think about is when you're living in halls or particularly the first year, you can make friends, you can network with people. Now when you live at home, it's slightly different because you're obviously living at home, you not, don't have that immediate connection with other people in the same course as you or the same environment as you. So you want to think about, okay, how do I make friends? How do I network? Do I need to go into university a little bit more during, say, Freshers' Week or maybe beforehand and get to know my lecturers, get to know the campus, make sure you don't get lost particularly when you get your timetable, university campus is massive. There's two different types. There's campus where everything is kind of in the same area, but it could be a very big campus. Um, or it would be a town. So for example, Bradford's a town one. So it's in the middle of town and you've got buildings in and out of streets and in and out of shops. Um, whereas Leeds, if anyone's been to Leeds campus, that's an actual campus. Everything's in the same area. 
So there's two different types of universe, and you've got to figure out, okay, am I going to get lost? Am I not going to get lost? How am I going to get around? And the thing is, how am I going to make friends? Because your friends are quite important at university. You've got to make trustful friends. Um, but they are important because they help you study. Now, I'm sure as parents, I know my parents asked me this million and one times, Freshers' Week. They was like, avoid Freshers' Week. It's not important. You don't have to go. You know, you hear a lot of horror stories about things that happen in Freshers' Week. It's not all bad, providing you think before you do something. So, there's loads of societies first to join. You've got things from debating, to politics, to sports, to languages. Um, religious, cultural, music, trips, volunteering, you name it, there'll be a society there. So for me, being a typical Tory, I joined the Conservative Party. Um, I also joined Sikh Society. Um, I joined the Dating Society and we had something called a Volunteering Society and St John's Ambulance. So they're the things that I joined. Just for, in the evenings, you will have time to relax and you want to build on your other skills around your studying. So it makes you stand out on your CV for your jobs, but also just makes you a bit more of a kind of all-rounded person. It makes you a bit of a better person. But one advice I'd give is don't feel like you have to join them. All these societies cost. It might just be five or ten pounds, or the sports one are about fifty pounds because you have to buy insurance as well. But don't think, oh, there's a society I really have to join it today. You can wait a week two weeks, you can test it out. The first two or three sessions are free anyway. Test it out. If you like it, then join it. But remember, you're on a limited budget, particularly as Indians or as Sikhs anyway. Your parents will help you out. I can pretty much guarantee them. If I needed money, I could ask my parents for it. But you are on a budget on your student finance, on your student loan. So just remember, okay, if it's £40 here and £40 there for a society, in your first week, you could be going what, 100, 200 pounds straight down the drain, so many terms, on just on societies. So take a minute, think, okay, do I need it? Do I not need it? Do I want to test it out first? And then test it out, and then you can go ahead and join if you really want to go. Just spoke about money. You are on a tight budget, so just be careful of what you spend it on. Be wise. If you're unsure, I'm sure your parents are on the other side of the phone. Just pick up the phone and you can ring them and ask them. The next thing is networking. Um, something that I learned was particularly being in our community, in a Gurdwara, go to a Gitan program. You can go up to anyone and ask a question and they'll be nice to you. Now when you go into the big wild world, you'll realise that's not actually true. For example, go on the London Underground. If you say good morning to someone, they give you a dirty look. It's just unusual to say good morning to another fellow human being, particularly in London or the southern area. So you've got to just realise, okay, what's the culture, what's different, what's not different, how do I fit in, how do I network? Um, the best thing I learned in my first couple of weeks was just how to introduce myself. It's really easy to say it now, but to go up to someone and say, hi, my name's Hesimra, what's yours? It's the hardest thing to do. But you just got to have that little bit of confidence so as parents, I really encourage you to get your kids, even from a young age, even if it's just going to Morrison's and just asking someone, go and ask what this price is, or you know, go get this one changed, I brought the wrong one. Those little bit of skills really help because it gives you that confidence to say, you know what, yeah, I can go ask someone. I can go talk to a total stranger and have a good conversation. You know, I'm not gonna run away, I'm not gonna be scared. And other things, introducing yourself, what are you studying? Be proud of what you're studying, particularly if it's a good course. I remember my lecturer always telling me off for saying I study maths. He was like, no, say your full degree, it's mathematics. It has an impact. And with friends, these friends are going to be with you for three or four years, so choose wisely. You don't want friends around you who are constantly thinking, when's the next break, or when can I go get something to eat, or when can I go home and sleep. You want friends who are thinking, okay, I've got a break between my lectures, let's go to the library, let's go sit and let's go read something, you know, let's help each other out on this problem. Um, particularly doing maths, I know it's not everyone's favourite subject, 
it, you can pull your hair out on problems. You can kind of get to the point of, I have no idea what this question is asking me. You know, you'll get that in life. But if you have friends around you, if you have people to support you, you can help. Um, I know if I ask many of the parents in here about maths, it'll go straight over your heads these days. I remember asking my dad, he was like, have you put the decimal point in the wrong place? And when you get to degree level, you don't use decimals anymore. So he had no idea what I was talking about. But it was an amusing conversation. But your friends are quite important. Now, the horror stories are usually around alcohol. This is the big exclamation mark. This is where we need to be aware. A lot of people around you, particularly in Freshers' Week, and say the first month of university, um, I call the first month of university break um, or make it kind of month. A lot of people in that first month will be drinking alcohol. Okay, Don't judge them for it. That's just their way of life. But it doesn't mean you have to go and do it either. Okay, They will be staying up all night and then coming to lectures in the morning, probably falling asleep and snoring next to you. Believe it or not, it happens. You know, People will be sat at the back of the lecture hall and they'll be snoring. But just let them get on with it. And I definitely recommend, even if you're just buying a bottle of Coke or something from the shop on campus, in that first month, or if not throughout your four years or three years of university, go and buy your own food. Unless you totally trust someone, and even then, be careful. Even if it's a bottle of Coke or a sandwich or a bucket of crisps, there's so many things that people can now inject into your bottles or your crisps and stuff. Just be safe. Go buy your own stuff. Go with people if you want to. But buy your own stuff. And also, with alcohol, a lot of people don't know this. I learned this quite quickly at university. In the morning, someone might seem absolutely fine after a night out. But actually, they're not. They're not in a state to drive. And a lot of people will be driving, even though they're drunk. So don't get into anyone's car in the morning. Okay, I don't want to scare you, but it's just something to know. Because I didn't know this until I realised, hang on, you were drinking last night. I'm not getting in a car with you. Um, so people will be drinking. Don't judge them for it. Just You don't have to be around them when they do that. Just make an excuse. I always used to say, I'm going to go for a walk. I fancy going for a run because I was a bit of a gym fanatic. I like going for a run. So I'd go to my trainers, go for a run or something. Or I'd just say, you know what, I need to go get a book actually. I didn't need to, but I'd go browse in the library or I'd go do something else. So have those little excuses that you can use to just get you out of a situation that you don't want to be in. And then maybe after that first month, you can just explain, actually, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't eat meat. If you want to do it, that's fine. But while you're doing it, I'd rather be somewhere else. And majority of people, because they're adults at that point, they accept you for it and they actually respect you for it. Um, a little tip. That first month is your make or break it month. I would say take activities with you. Um, I took lots of DVDs, lots of films, I took lots of books, because uh, there is a lot of waiting around, particularly because you haven't actually started your course yet, so you've got no homework to do or nothing to revise. But also, a lot of people will be networking, drinking, going out and about, so you'd want something to do in that evening. So take books, take Ethan, take films, whatever you like doing in the evening and chilling out. Um, but something to do is always good, because then it just keeps you busy. Something to be aware of as well, during that first two weeks, a lot of people from the local town will know it's Freshers' Week, so they will come onto campus. So just because someone says, this is what I'm studying, don't necessarily believe them straight away, in that first month anyway. After that, after the first two weeks, maybe three, if you know, if it's a really like, town-based university, um, people will just split away, and then you'll be fine. It will just be people studying on campus. Okay, role of parents. Now, a lot of people think going to away to university is totally no rules, freedom, get away from parents telling you what to do. I got no more wake up calls, no more having to go to bed at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, no more no internet at night, all those rules that we have in the house. But parents have a lot to offer. Um, I don't think I would have lasted four years at university if it wasn't for my parents. Um, I'm going to talk about technology and communication together. The best thing is your phone. I remember, I think about two weeks before I went to university, and bear in mind that I wasn't Amrathari when I went to university. I took Amrath about a month into university, and that's another story altogether. But um, two weeks before going to university, my dad said, and my mom said actually, 
you need a phone with a contract. Up until the age of 18, I was always on pay as you go. It would be emergency only on your phone. No internet, nothing. Emergency only. But they said, no. Now you need internet, you need your phone, you need your texts. So I got unlimited everything. And did I need it? <laughs> Every morning, say when my dad was driving to work and on the way home when he was driving home, he would ring me, he'd check in with me, he'd say, what have you done today, what haven't you done? Have you woken up on time? Have you had breakfast? All the usual questions that parents ask. And then in the evening when I rang my mum after she came home from work, she'd ask me all the same again. Have you cooked? What haven't you cooked? Did it, was it nice? Did it make nice? Do you need more recipes? Little things like that. Um, and the amount of times I said to mum, mum, you know that doll that you made and it was really nice? Well, I tried and it, it turned out wrong. So it's all those little things that you kind of learn, yeah, okay, maybe it's a little bit hard to cook on your own. Um, but speaking with your parents absolutely every day without fail is a must. Okay, technology allows you to do it now. I remember when my parents, you know, told me when they were growing up to talk to someone, you have to send telegrams and messages through other people. And now you just pick up a phone and you're on there. Um, another thing that really got me through university, particularly my first two years when I had that time in the evening, Skype. Literally, I would be in my room in my flat in Reading. Mum and Dad would be here in Bradford and my little brother and we'd have Skype on and it was literally like I was still sitting in my living room talking, joking, messing around, annoying my parents and vice versa, them annoying me you know, helping my little brother with his homework I was 300 miles away but yet that communication was still there and another thing is things like Google Calendar so if you download everything onto Google Calendar about where you're going, what you're doing, and then sync it to one of your parents' phones, so I did my dad's phone because my mum's useless with technology, but you know, it really helped them to know where I was, where I wasn't, if I was safe, if I wasn't safe, and things like that. And the best thing about parents is they remind you to study, eat, sleep, and all that. But also it just helps you stand on your own two feet, all these little things, particularly asking parents for advice. Um, or if you have anyone in the local area as well that kind of can act as your parents. So I was really lucky that I was about an hour and a half away from London. And the Sangath in London's amazing. So literally there's there's one uncle who was like another dad to me. He'd always check in with me every week and he'd always text me saying, There's a heathen programme, come stay at my house, I'll look after you. So the purpose of university, time and time again, people will say it, but I can't stress it enough, it is to study and pass your degree. But it also teaches you so many life skills, so take note of them. I tried making a list last night, and I ran out of space because I've learned so much. Um, things about using your own initiative, things about thinking on the spot, how to talk, how not to talk, when to engage, when not to engage. Um, driving long distances without falling asleep, the amount of times I've driven home, the amount of times I've gone to an Ethan program on my own. It's quite hard after, you know, you'll know if you stay up all night for a rent buy off for a Ethan, driving back's very hard and it's quite dangerous when it's dark. But those little skills that you learn, you can't learn them anywhere else. Like university is the best place to learn them. Um, how to talk. So for example, I spoke with my vice chancellor at university quite a lot. Um, I met people like David Miliband, a lot of politicians came to Reading University with Marjorie is good, but now I've met the Prime Minister, I can communicate with him and his team. Anything that we have, it's all those little skills that we learn. And most importantly, it's leaving you with a good impression. But more importantly, you leaving the university with who a Sikh should be and who a Sikh is brought up to be. A lot of people at university will say, oh, you're a Sikh, you're the people who go to parties and get drunk all the time, okay? That is the impression people have, or they won't have a clue who Sikhs are. There was, I had eight people in my corridor my first year of university, and only three of them knew what a Sikh was. The rest I had to teach. I was like, no, I'm not a Muslim, I'm not a Hindu, I'm a Sikh. Okay, it's totally different. I don't drink, I don't eat meat, I don't smoke. And it's all those little things. What impression are you going to leave on other people? I've spoken about friends a little bit, about how important they are, and I'm going to emphasize that. But first, in the first month, don't give out your mobile numbers to anyone. Doesn't matter who they are, okay? Your friends, you have to pick and choose them. In our society, in our community, we're very trusting, and you know what, we treat each other like a brother, sister, mother, father, or um, daughter or son. 
in the Goddess Society, you'll know what it's like. They don't do that. So be very careful who you give out your numbers to. I had one rule from day one, even when I was living at home. You don't speak to boys at all, whether that's on Facebook, whether that's on Twitter, whatever social network, whether it's on your phone. When you go to university, you then have to be selective about who you speak to. So I still had the same rule, but I would say, okay, if you're on my course, we can communicate via email. Or when you get to know them, so even after the first two years, I still don't have any boys on my Facebook. And it's only after the two years I said, okay, I can now trust these people. They can be added on my Facebook. And if they do something stupid, like a few of them have, I have to delete them. They're not worth keeping on. But don't give out your phone numbers in the first month. That's a must. And don't get into the car with anyone you don't know or you don't trust. But apart from that, do make friends on your course. They're the people that will they will become your family at university. You know, it's a bit of a cliche to say they're probably the best friends you'll ever make. But you live with them, you work with them, you study with them, they pick you up when you're down, they help you, they celebrate things with you. Um, I know one of them, I only made about two or three really good friends at university and I keep in communication with them even now. And they are, they're literally like family. They treat me like a sister, I treat them like a sister. You know, you can talk to them about everything. Um, but they don't replace your actual family. Your family is still your family. But it is very important to make those friends because they help you in your course. They help you with little things like, for example, if you're sharing a car or sharing food or if you need a little bit of money just for a time being, you know, you can just borrow that extra pound or two. But also, university learning is very different from school learning. School, you get told, this is what's coming up in your exam, just revise it. At university, they'll say, so this is the topic that might come up in your exam, and then you've got to go figure out, okay, what kind of exam questions could I get on this topic? It's a lot of self-learning. It's a lot of, okay, he's taught me, or my lecturer's taught me this, it could be male or female. Okay, how do I apply that to the exam? How do I say, okay, how am I going to pass the exam? You need to revise, you need to study, you need to do a lot more independent reading. So that's where your friends come in handy. Things to think about. What impression do you want to leave? Okay. What impression do you want to leave on your friends, on your lecturers and on the university? So with my knowledge is good, but I never got in the habit of swearing, even from day one. So when I went to university in the first two weeks, I remember one of my lecturers saying, I really enjoy talking to you because you're the one student I've met so far that doesn't swear in every sentence. Now that, for me, was a good impression to leave. Not because of who I am, but because I wear the star on my head. You're an ambassador to your guru. And that is what they then learned about Sikhs. I was the only Sikh on my course, and there was about 300 of us in, in the Master of Mathematics course to begin with. There's 300 of us, I was the only Sikh. So the impression I left was how do Sikhs, how are they brought up, how do they live their life? And that's what you've got to, you want to put those good things across to other people if you've never met a Sikh before. Um, it's also not very easy to stay away from pubs at university, unfortunately. Every student's union will have one, even if it's just for people going into relaxing. Now, I made a rule from day one that I would not go into a pub. It doesn't matter how much I wanted to, so a lot of my conservative events and meeting really good politicians like David Miliband and um, Jeremy Haywood and things like that were in pubs and bars. And I would just say, I'm really sorry, I'm not going to meet them. But I would wait until they came out or I would go, I'd email the vice chancellor and say, I'm not going into a pub because of my religious beliefs or because it's not my environment. However, I would really like to meet this person and they would make an exception, they would make other places available. Um, with Maharaj Gidbar, for some reason Maharaj made me strong enough to say, you know what, that's fine, I'll miss out on this opportunity. You know, it's fine, I, I don't have to be everywhere all the time. But sometimes you do have to go in. So the very first day we got to university, it was just me, Dad and McClinda that went, because Mum was busy. But we had to go into the students' union to pick up the keys for the for my flat. There was no other choice. So sometimes you have to do it. But when you have a choice, you can choose to say, no, actually, I can avoid this. I don't have to do it. Um, another example of that is I worked while I was at university, only a little bit, but I did work. Um, and I used to give tours to other people, so new parents, new students. And I would literally say, here's the bar, here's the club, 
go and have a look. Didn't have to say, I'm not entering or anything like that. I just said, go have a look and I would stay outside. The parents would go in, the students would go in, but it wasn't needed for me to go in, so I got away from it. Now, I've talked a lot about be careful negatives. I want to do a little bit about successes, about the positives of university. It's not all daunting. The things like public speaking, the people who knew me four years ago, I would never be stood up here talking right now. But it's taught you about that little bit of confidence, a little bit of public speaking, how to communicate with people with authority, um, how to explain an idea, how to debate, how to put your point of view across, how to maybe think outside the box. It also teaches you when to engage, when to step back. Um, it teaches you definitely to stand on your own two feet. But it also allows you to build on the values that Siki taught you. Siki teaches you about Biar, about Himad, about um, humility, about Izzat. Those things you take with you and you just build on them. You actually apply them. Maybe for the first time in your life, without anyone watching over you, you apply them and you think, my parents said that to me. Yeah, actually, maybe they were right. Um, we have a phrase in our house, mum, dad, you were almost right, because we don't want to give them too much of an ego boost. But, you know, your parents are right majority of the time, but you only realise it when you've actually moved away and you think, oh, yeah, they said that to me. And your sickies rule is your protection. Okay, when I used to walk around, the millions of times I can remember someone coming up to me saying, you know what, you're the first female I've seen wearing that thing on your head. They didn't even know what it was called, but they knew what a Sikhi Saroop was. Okay? You, know, you can teach them about the star, even if it's the one word that you teach them, they know that. And it acts as your protection. For example, would you ever want to take your Dastar, or would you ever want to take Maharaj of Dastar into a pub? Would you want to take it into a club? Would you want to take it where people are dancing, smoking, whatever. It, those little questions in your head act as your protection. It just makes you a little bit wiser and think before you act. And the last thing is budgeting. Um, a lot of people are concerned about debt. Now, don't worry too much, everyone gets in debt. But you've got to realise the loan that you get in your bank account, prioritise, you need it on books, on food, on your bills, on your rent before you want it on. I don't know, going out on that board or cinema or anything else with your friends. So just prioritise it. Now, being up in a, your parents will help you out. But do that little bit of prioritising yourself first. Learn how to budget and then you'll be better off for the future. So a couple of tips, um, just little things that I learned. First thing is keeping in Sangat. There is nothing more important than finding your local Godola um, going there on that very first day, drop everything in your room, go to your local Godora, because the majority of the time it is a it's either a Saturday or a Sunday, you go to your university. You know, go, go to your local Godora, see who's around, make friends at the Godora. They're the people that will help you keep strong. And if you need help finding that, call someone that can help you. Um, but there's also, there will be someone that you know, I guarantee. I don't know how Maharaj does it, but Maharaj always makes sure that there is someone in that area. The amount of times you go somewhere and you think, I know that person, it's just amazing. Okay, You'll know it's true, because you'll just bump into someone and you'll just think, I met them. Maybe three, four years ago, but I did meet them. And then that's how you keep your son up. Doing so a lot of charity work. While I was at university, Maharaj Gopal, Course Corner was built. This is what Course Corner is all about. It's about inspiring other Bibia to say, yes, it's okay to go away to university. It's okay to get a good job, it's okay to be inspired to achieve what you want to achieve, but just be careful and stay safe as well. Um, also, other charity work, like when I started university, there was very little heathen videos online, and Dad happened to have a camera at home that he never used, so I kind of stole it without asking, and started recording loads of heathen programs, and now they're all online, and the amount of messages that I get saying, you know, have you gone to this program or can you come to my program and record as well? You know, if you just inspire that one extra person into Sikhi, then you've done a good job. And it is a lot of hard work, but Seva just really does keep you grounded. When everyone else is d relaxing, chilling out, if you just take that extra minute to do a little bit of Seva, it 
it actually helps you and it helps you study as well because it makes you concentrate a lot more. Studying hard during the day, or in my case, during night, find the time that that's best for you to study. If it's during the day, that's great. If it's during the night, that's great. But most importantly, make sure it fits around your Amrafella or your Bart or whatever you do during the day. So even if it's just doing more month than every morning, every night before you go to sleep, or similar, or something simple, just do it because it really keeps you grounded. I can't stress enough keeping contact with home. Home is home. Home is where you are from and home is where you're going to go back to. So keep in contact. And make friends on your course. So two things to remember mainly. Who are you? Oh, so why are you there and who you are? So why are you there? You're paying thousands of pounds or probably borrowing thousands of pounds from the government and you will have to pay it back eventually. It will be in really small lumps and you'll never notice it going out of your wage, but you do have to pay it back. But it's to go to the university, it's to get a degree or a master's, to then get a better job, to then hopefully provide better for your, pet, for your family, help your parents when they get older. So education is your priority. But remember who you are. You know, we're Guru Sikhs. You know, we have... We have different responsibilities to everyone else, particularly the Gore. We have different responsibilities. We have different standards to live up to. And at the end, there's an embarrassing picture, but you graduate, you come home, and you're safe. That is what's important. You come home with a degree. You come home where you can stand on your own two feet. You come home with that little bit of extra wisdom to say, actually, Mum and Dad was right. Actually, maybe I can help out a little bit more at home because now I've got the time to. Or, I don't know. You just come, it's hard to explain, but you just, for some reason, you do become an adult. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm free to talk anytime or just drop course corner line anywhere. And the main thing is you come home, you're safe, you look for a job. Um, I know I've started tuition, so if anyone wants any maths tutoring, let me know. Um, but tuition, find a job, be with family, basically, and just carry on living your life. Um, I'm not perfect, definitely made lots of mistakes, but hopefully sharing my little bit of experience. I could talk for years on the things I learned in my four years of university, but by sharing my experience, I can hopefully prepare you guys, prepare your kids, and hopefully you'll be a little bit more confident going to university and realising actually your kids will be safe or you'll be safe yourself. So please forgive me if I said anything wrong. Why would you go